Good evening. Welcome to our February 1st, 2022 City Council meeting. It's 7 p.m. and the meeting is now in session. Tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor John Lee from Zaris Church and Councilmember Tabatabai will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. Well, thank you for inviting me to, to tonight's invocation. Let us pray. Sovereign God of all creation, we thank you for the year 2022, and we especially thank you for the first day of February and also many blessings that we have received this year. We thank you for the people in our lives, and we thank you for the ability to use our mind to discern your will and to dream of creating a stronger healthier and better communities together. We thank you for our city of West Covina and all who serve it. We thank you for those who work diligently to keep the city safe and healthy. And, and there are many faces being a part of this building, this community, Lord. And we thank you for those who lead, plan, and execute. And we thank you for those who are working on the front line. We thank you for our community. We also lift those who are hungry, unemployed, and displaced. We pray for those who are dealing with illness, the COVID-19, other mental and physical. For these and all the burdens of our community, the Lord, hear our prayers. As this meeting begins this evening, give each person clarity, compassion, and creativity. Give them listening ears and thoughtful words. Give them presence of mind and open heart. And we pray all this in the name of the Most High. Amen. May be seated. Deputy City Clerk, roll call, please. Councilmember Tabantabai. Present. Councilman Wu. Here. Councilwoman Lobos Fiato. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Diaz. Here. Mayor Castellanos. Here. City Attorney, is there anything to be reported at a closed session? Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And moving on to our presentations. We've got a police department annual report. Herman, please stop disrupting from the audience, please. That's multiple times already, and we're just getting started. Please knock it off. Good evening, council, staff, and uh, members of the viewing audience. My name is Chief Richard Bell. I'm here today because we are going to present to you our second annual review. Um, last year um, was the first one. Took a little time to get it together. I was very proud of it, but I really think you're going to like this one. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to introduce and then turn it over to our staff here. Uh, Alexis Annapolis here. She's a community service officer, but she is one of the lead persons in our um, uh, PIO position, uh, community relations. Tim Rogers oversees that, and they do a fabulous job. We also have Brandon, who's up there. I don't know. He's hiding. Uh, but they all come together. They do a great job. When you see our social media posts and all that, it's because of this team that we have here. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Tim. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, City Manager. Um, thank you for giving us a few minutes to present our annual review. We're really excited about it. Like the chief said, Alexis is the creative mind behind it and a lot of her social media posting. Um, so this really wouldn't be possible without a lot of her hard work. So we're just going to highlight a few pages as we go through the evening. Um, it'll be online on our website. And then later on, it'll be in our station in the front lobby. There'll be some copies for everybody. So the first page I want to highlight is going to be our 2021 strategic accomplishments. Uh, in 2021, we transitioned to electronic collision reporting system, a citation writer, um, electronic training record software, 
We have the flock license plate reader system that's throughout the city. It's been really successful. Um, we updated our department website, and we continue to enhance our social media um, with the help of Alexis. And the next page over is super important, so we want the public to always know what we've accomplished, what we're looking for as a department of the future. And we're really looking to foster that great relationship with the community, transparency, to see what their police department's doing year by year. And we're hoping they really enjoy the, the, uh, the review. So in 2022, we're hoping to and plan to implement body-worn cameras for all sworn officers. We're going to add a detective position in the Detective Bureau, um, and we're going to update our radios for our p- patrol personnel. Um, we want to create a wellness program for the, for the emotional and mental and physical well-being of all department staff, restructuring the department's forensic identification unit, and we want to add uh, additional personnel to, to the traffic unit. Um, in, in enhancing the public safety, we're hoping to add and return the overlap shifts to patrol, which will increase the staffing in patrol on a daily basis by having the addition of the two overlap shifts back. That's a goal we have for 2022. As you go through the next few pages, you'll see a message from the chief and our two captains. Uh, an, addition to our, uh, an addition to our personnel was the captain position this year, which, was, which has been really uh, needed, and we're really grateful to have that position back. Um, in moving forward through 2020 and 2021, there were some challenges with our staffing. There was a reduction of nine uh, officers, sworn officers at some point during that, the pandemic. And we know um, through recognition from the council and the mayor and the city manager, um, we, you were um, really gracious in giving us and allowing us to hire 10 additional officers. Um, and so that's been a great accomplishment. We're still in the process of hiring those uh, additional officers. It takes a process through the hiring and getting them through the academy and laterally and over. But we have been able to increase our staffing up to 100 uh, thanks to your um, addition. Um, next is going to be the service area. So this is where the community wants to reach out to the lieutenants in patrol and what service area they live in. So we really want to be the point of contact, the first point of contact for a community member. And the, the review will highlight each service area and what lieutenant and how you contact them. Uh, really, really important that we work together and figure out whatever issue might be happening in your service area. They can contact us, and we'll work to problem solve together with the community. The next two pages are an addition from last year. Um, this will help highlight their each individual service areas where they live, what's been going on in 2021 or whatever year we're in as far as the crime in your particular service area. So if you have questions regarding the stats um, and uh, what's occurring in your area, these pages will be able to help you out. The book then c- continues on through our patrol statistics, some of our units, traffic and canine. It'll go through dispatch and jailer and some of our other details throughout the police department. And this year, we're super excited with the Homeless Outreach Park Enforcement Team. We were able to add an additional officer. So now we have Officer Ling and we have Officer Mallow out there as partners going out to assist the homeless out there. During the pandemic, we had one officer and we were able to add the additional officer with your assistance. And they're out there daily trying to help the homeless. So that's really exciting for us. School resource officers, uh, we were able to, through a grant, fund a fourth school resource, resource officer, which is super important in assisting the, the schools throughout the city. So we partner with the West Covina, Unified, West Covina Unified School District, the Covina Valley Unified School District, and the Roland Unified School District. The community can go through the uh, annual review. You'll see our training. You'll see our crime stats and the different categories. You'll see some photographs, life on patrol, and what our officers are doing on a daily basis. Um, Then it comes to our dedicated service. I just want to take a moment. You'll see the volunteer photograph there. Um, The gentleman on the left, as you're reading it, is Bill Cagle. Um, Sadly, he passed away this weekend, um, and so we just want to acknowledge him. He was a very uh, solid member of the volunteer program. He was the coordinator. Um, He um, spent a lot of time always helpful. Anything we needed, we could call on Bill, and he was willing to help. So I just wanted to recognize recognize Bill. He was a really big part of our department and family. 
Um, moving on to the community, you'll see some of the events in here. The community can see what events we go to, some things that we've done with the community, Cadillac converter etching event. We had the pumpkins with the police. That was a lot of fun. And then uh, lastly, we always want to remember our fallen officers. They gave the ultimate sacrifice um, in protecting and serving the community. And so we always want to remember the three fallen officers. Um, and this year, one of our canines, Rec, uh, passed away uh, after seven years of, of service with the police department. So we want to recognize his service. Um, and this is just a glimpse of the year. It'll be online, like we said. It will be um, in the lobby shortly. Um, and we invite everybody to come and enjoy it and take a look and learn about what their police department's done over the last year. And we'll be doing this every year. So I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for the time. Thank you for the report. Any questions from council? Uh, not, well, question is your acknowledgement. If it's 2021, then you have all the uh, councils incorrect. Just FYI, because <laughs> last year, at, yeah, 2021, this is a uh, former, this is the new mayor 2022. But anyways, on your school resource officer, um, I know you have like Covina Valley and Roland Unified. Are, are officers just... Uh, overseeing the schools that are in West Covina, or are they also overseeing schools that are outside the city? Because uh, Covina Valley and Roland Unified, there's you know schools in the city of Covina. It's going to be the schools within the city. Okay. I just wanted that clarification. And then um, the, is it possible to get the stats? Um, let me go back to that. I know we have the four, let me see. The four service areas, is it possible to get the stats of the five council districts? I know that, like, some of my council district is in two service areas. Is it possible to get, to break it down with, just to see that, to see the stats within each council? If those are numbers that can be gathered. Okay. Depending on the parameters that we enter. Oh, okay. I'd like to see that if possible. Um, and then I just wanted to say, again, thank you. Great job. I know when I came in. As a first council person, um, in, our police was getting bashed a lot <laughs> that first year, and I kept pushing with our, our chief that you guys got to put it out because a lot of the residents don't see the many good things that you do or all the work that you do. And so I know when it came the first year, I was super happy, and all the things that we mentioned about improvements, um, you guys took to heart and you did improve it and I just want to say excellent job. The photos are great. The community loves the information. The weekly review is, um, you know, residents enjoy that as well and it's good to see. It's, I feel proud and I think the residents feel very pride, um, proud to see all the annual review and all the accomplishment that the West Covina Police Department does. So thank you again. Thank you. Any, any more comments? Councilman Wu? I want to <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I want to say this is a wonderful report. Okay, and then I've been receiving your Facebook post. Okay, all the time. Okay, it's like I cannot get away because it's always there. Okay, and they're always update, and I have to read it. Okay, so and all the information is great. I think it's branding and uh, informational. Okay, and uh, so resident can appreciate what's going on and this and that because a lot of. Uh, People just feel like, okay, we don't know what's going on, the city and the de uh, police department. I think there's, there's a wonderful thing and uh, to have a report like this. Okay, and last year we, city kind of imitate you guys, so we have a state of the city report due to I don't have a state of the city, so I'm using the, the booklet. So hopefully this year, okay, as last year, Mayor is uh, Letty Lopez. I think you should follow through <clears throat> and to tell people what we have done uh, last year. So, but this is a wonderful addition. Okay, continue carry on. I think... And the police department right now doing very good. Okay, I think we we want to support you to give you uh, enough staffing. Okay, I think the importance not only to protect this, the city, the resident, is protect the police officer too. Police officer need to cover each other. We need to give you enough staff so you guys will be safe. At the same time, resident will be safe. So it's, we need to protect each other. So so staffing is something very important. Okay, so another thing we want to make sure all this service like a. We've been talking about all the ships coming back. Thank you so much to bring it back because they will help the responder, responder time much faster. Okay. And uh, uh, a couple of years ago, people complaining about uh, that they call and the due to, okay, and the uh, overlay ship, then, then nothing happened. But I think right now become 
very rare. I think right now you guys have a very good reputation. I think、uh, service, but still have a room for improvement. But other than that, we can see the improvements already there. So thank you so much. And last one I want to share with you is homeless. Now I thank you so much to increase another step. Thank you, Chief. Okay, and、uh, so we have a two person. Okay, to full time to help the homeless issue. Okay, and we try to coordinate with a nonprofit group to work together to find resource, and we maybe can find another of a service entity beside the Union Station because <clears throat> we want them to provide information and the proposal we haven't got it. So maybe you have any other outlet. That we can kind of、uh, talking to them to come over and give a proposal, so we can maybe contract with their server and work with you guy. Then, since you trust this group, then we can work together with other, for example, other churches. This and provide some housing, so we can help the homeless, provide some service for them. So hopefully, 2022, we can kind of address this homeless issue. Okay, with you double your man- manpower at the same time, we can get some agency to help us. I think rather than depend on the county, Lhasa, I think forget that we just depend on ourselves. Otherwise, the waiting continue and the service continue lag. So and the problem continue to grow. So hopefully we can kind of work together. Okay, with your police department, with some right entity you recommended, so we can work together. Hopefully we can address this issue more efficiently and effectively. But once again. Thank you so much. You, you guys are doing a great job. Let continue to do the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Tabatabai. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor.、Uh, first, first off,、uh, thank you again.、Uh, I think the the outreach、uh, to the community uh, has uh, consistently uh, gotten better. Uh, and uh, you know, one thing I'm looking forward to. I know when I first moved to West Covina. Um, there were、uh, a couple events、uh, with, you know,、uh, coffee with the chief, and you know,、um, little town halls with area lieutenants. And I know because of COVID, we haven't been able to do that. But、uh, I am looking forward to hopefully、um, that that starting up again. I think that just、uh, would build on、uh, what's already happening here. And、uh, you know, I think that continued outreach and, and just talking with community members、um, re- really does good.、Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy to see this. Uh, and I'm happy to see the constant communication. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Diaz. Thank you, Mayor.、Um, I just want to say that this is an excellent, excellent book you you have here that is、um, depicts all the things that you do for our community, and、um, I think it's very informative. And、um, I just want to tell you,、um, thank you so much for everything that you do for our city, West Covina. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Lopez Viado. So, I,、um, pictures are excellent. I just wanted to know: is all these pictures taken from you, or wow? Okay, they, if you haven't seen it, they're amazing. I know, like some residents, the shots. That's like a professional photographer has this,、um, and you really capture them well. I, I think some some of the residents were like, "Wow, some model." We didn't realize we had models in our department, but they're real police officer there. So,、uh, thank you again. They look amazing. Good job. Well, thank you for the comments. Thank you both for everything you do. Thank you to the chief, to the whole department for the great work, and let's keep it up. Thank, thank you, you guys. Appreciate it. Have a great night. You too. Yeah. Let's see here. That takes us to the oral communications part of our agenda. If anyone would like to address the council, please fill out a yellow speaker card and submit it to the deputy city clerk. Any emails received by 5 p.m. have been posted to the city's website, and all emails are part of the public record.、Um, as I've done before, I would like to see consensus from my council to shorten the, the time from five minutes to three minutes. Have consent. Cool. Sure. Go ahead.、Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor.、Uh, I, I I do like to say that、um, I. I I do kind of have an issue with with the the cutting of the time,、uh, just as as a as a resident who's, who's spoken in public comment quite a few times.、Uh, I know I've, it it takes time to prepare. It's pretty intimidating to go up there,、uh, and you know, 
uh, to, to come up and then have the, the time uh, changed when, when the agenda went out, thinking you had five minutes, uh, is, is kind of disruptive when it's already a, a difficult situation to speak. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to, to keep the comments uh, to five minutes, uh, you know, unless, you know, we had uh, a large number as, as we had done before. Uh, so again, just just again thinking about the the, the time spent to prepare. Your, your input has been noted. Uh, I still think it's four to one. So um, I think some of the comments have been disruptive. So I'd like to move the meeting forward and keep it at three. Uh, please please stop out there. I'm running a meeting. Mr. Mayor, uh, can we get a motion in a second? No, that's a direction of the chair. We're, that's not what we're doing. Uh, we're 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 gonna um, continue. Uh, Deputy City Clerk, how many speakers do we have tonight? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have seven speakers. Okay, um, let's. Uh, who's the first one? Our first speaker is Armando Herman, followed by Mike Greenspan, followed by John Schumacher. So, Mr. Mayor, you continue to suppress our First Amendment. Look at the children in here observing the mayor, the tyrant Dario. Because I, a puppet, raised the issue to you, Mr. Mayor. You're such a selfish young man and a fool. Now, don't discredit me for being a puppet. Well, your strings are pulled by those around you. So I, I came up with this First Amendment under the United States versus Bagdasarian, an unpleasant sharp attacks against the government and public officials. Language of the political arena is often abusive. Sorry, Mr. Dario. Dum dum, dum dum. So. Mr. Herman said to read this into the record. What TLC? Dario, Dario, are you a scrub? No, I don't want to meet you nowhere. No, Dario, I don't want to give your mine and no. We don't want none of your time, Mr. Dario, you scrub mayor who censors our First Amendment. No, I don't want your scrub. A scrub is dead, Dario. God, they can't get no love from me, Dario. Look at that scrub. He needs a cookie. And he's looking like trash. The mayor can't get enough with a deadbeat ass. Try to holla. Try to holla at me. I don't want to scrub. Scrub. Are you still mad at me? Because I exercise my First Amendment, please. So, Mr. Mayor, what have you done for the homeless? You haven't done shit. You're a jackass. That's why you submit us to less time. You're the only mayor besides these other four quiet ladies and men that don't say shit about our First Amendment anymore. Maybe because Bagda Vizarian, or is it the United States versus Bagda Zarian for the record? You know, the country be F for another four years by tyrant Dario? Duh, you look like a scrub, Dario. That's why we call you a wit, a deadbeat ass. Wit, that's the new terminology we use for a cunt like you. Thank you, Mr. Our next speaker is Please. Mike Greenspan, followed by John Schumacher, followed by Wen-Wen Zhang. Our next speaker is John Shoemaker, followed by Wen Zhang, followed by Ray Vargas. Mr. 
Good evening. At the last city council meeting, there was a person who spoke about how we should be grateful that we're not like the city of Los Angeles, where you're only allowed one minute to speak. Well, we should be so fortunate to be, you know, to be limited to the one. Because L.A. City allows one minute to speak on up to ten agenda items. So you can get up to ten minutes to speak. But here's the best part, the absolute best part. And Council Member Wu, I'll prove it tonight. The LA City Council limits council members to three minutes. Just think how great that would be. We not have to listen to Tony go on and on and on and on for 20 minutes, patting somebody on the back or patting himself on the back. We're doing his, oh, I'll leave that one out. Also, it would make him read the console packet before the meetings because he couldn't sit up here for a half hour asking questions about it under the disguise of discussion. You know what that's called? Preparation. We can only hope. Thank you. Our next speaker Herman. is Wen Zhang. No. All the way. Followed by Ray Vargas. Disruptive, please, Herman. Don't disrupt the meeting. I've asked you already twice today. Followed by Lisa Mayo. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council members, City Managers, staff, and all residents. My name is Wang Wen Zhang, West Covina Library Manager. First of all, I wanted to say... Uh, Happy Chinese New Year, <laughs> the year of Tiger. <laughs> well, February is a Black History Month, and we invite you to join the library to celebrate it. And we have a special program in the box for adults featuring a folk um, artist. Her name is um, Clementine Hunter. And you can come to the library sidewalk and pick up uh, art activity um, kids and uh, instructions. Can you hear me? Maybe I doubled. <laughs> Sorry. Um, our activity uh, um, supplies and instructions at the sidewalk, sidewalk, the library sidewalk. And we also um, give out um, activity kits for children and teens as well in, um, in February. Um, the art activity for children, school-aged children, is a storytelling spotlight if you give a dog a donut. Um, for, the, for the teenagers, the art activity is, what's your story? Okay. And um, so all the art activity kits are available for pickup at the library sidewalk. And first come, first served, as always, as supply last. Uh, and also, I would like to uh, report to you that the library, uh, West Covina Library sidewalk service is very well received by the residents during library closure for renovation. And thank you for your patience. The library is still closed. Uh, now that the tax season is here, and you can come to library and uh, pick up uh, to, to get a li uh, you know, the tax forms um, as usual. And we have received a federal 1040 forms and uh, uh, instruction booklets already. So we're still waiting for the California 540 tax forms. But if you need a forms or a different forms, any forms, just, just call the library. We'll be happy to print them out from the library, uh, from the website. And, um, and you can pick up at the sidewalk service. I wanted to thank you so much for your time and attention and wish you all have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ray Vargas, followed by Lisa Mayo, followed by R. Robinson. Good evening, Council. I'm here today uh, to acknowledge uh, Mayor Dario, um, I appreciate him, my family appreciates 
you coming out to my resident. You told me you were going to come. You came. We sat down. We had a good meeting for maybe an hour and 45 minutes. Um, you understood the issues, my concerns, um, and all the other little riffraff, you know, going around. I showed you. I pointed out. We discussed it and everything. Um, that's the same discussion I had with Tabat Tabai. He's been around my place about three times. And I got a good friend, uh, Mr. Lloyd Johnson, um, and we see each other maybe twice a week. And, uh, you know, he gives me guidance, he gives me good direction, good information and whatnot. Uh, because when I came here to West Covina three years ago, um, I was very disappointed because I came from Hacienda Heights. And uh, just a big difference, you know, the lifestyle, um just uh, the people in general and um, all the riffraff with the uh, homeless writing on the walls, um, breaking into my mailbox, uh, stealing one of my cars, breaking into my cars right there because I'm on Vincent, you know, and I had to police and protect and secure my property for almost three years. You know, I had an abandoned house cross street. I showed you Mo the Monkey's house. You know, I had to jump that fence, get the guys from Baldwin Park, Asusa out of there. You know, I didn't go alone, you know, but uh, we did it, you know. And uh, I also want to give uh, thanks to Captain uh, Tony Quarantina. He also came to my house the day after uh, the council meeting. And uh, he gave me his business card with a uh, 24-7 cell phone. I could call him anytime no matter what time it is, and uh, he'll respond. He'll be at my door or he'll send somebody at my door, uh, which is good because the homeless issue, like I told you, it's out of hand. My kids uh, walk from school. They're getting bothered by the homeless. You know, uh, they're following them and whatnot. And uh, I know my time's up. You're the mayor. You got control. Take control because we want to be here. We want to speak with you. We want you to answer our issues, our concerns, you know, try and limit Tony and take control in your position, you know, um, and give us the five minutes, you know, that we we, we need. Uh, when I started here three years ago, we had five minutes. Now we're reduced to three minutes, you know. doesn't make sense. We can't finish what we got to say. We come prepared, okay? City manager, also, thank you for... Uh, sending me that email on the intersection. We got a bad intersection on Puente and Vincent. It's the worst intersection there. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lisa Mayo, followed by R. Robinson. Well, I haven't been here in a long time. God bless each and every one of you for having to put up with the things that you have to put up with. We are taught to be kind when you're younger and respect authority. So I come to you with respect. And thank you for the work that you're doing, each and every one of you. Because nobody really knows how hard you work at what you do. So I thank you. I came to you because I wanted to invite each and every one of you to the red carpet event that we are having at the uh, West Covina Elks Lodge. Um, the film, of course, that I uh, have worked with was to teach about anti-bullying, domestic violence, and the power of kindness. That if we take one random act of kindness a day, we could change the world. And you guys are doing an amazing job in doing that as I see it today. So I brought it along so that you guys could ha have it. I didn't know how many to bring, so I brought enough. Of course, you'd have to sanitize it and everything, but it's right here for you guys to get. And also to let you know that because I've had a lot of uh, great uh, people working with me within the community, um, the film has not only just won one film, uh, one film festival, but it's really been selected in five more. So that is a credit to all the uh, non-actors and actors that have been, because there's been a community event with along with actors. 
but that they have done it. So I'm hoping that each and every one of you can come and join us. I've asked also if it's possible that the city of West Covina put a banner to represent our city as well, because since it's a red carpet event, I want to each and every one of the nonprofit organizations to come, and I've asked each and every one of them to bring a banner and show it, because uh, I, obviously I'm going to have Channel 9 there, and uh, I've been blessed that uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu said she'd be there, and Senator Susan Rubio is going to be there, and I hope you're going to be there. For, for the record, the date again? Uh, it's, it's in blood. No. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be February the 19th. At, it's from 6, and it's um, appetizers, and I was showing the first uh, the film that has just won at a film festival, but this will be the first time that I'll be showing it to the community and what it represents. But it's from They Will Know, which is based on Exodus 2946, but I'm not here to preach. Thank you. And I've got 11 minutes. Lord, just for today, let your will be done in our lives. Our last speakers are Robinson. A happy New Year of the Tiger. Um, a state of ca or county level grand jury uh, should commence to secure a detailed investigation of public health events in the past two years. Uh, due to the Biden CARES Act Medicare incentives program, you could limp into a hospital with a sprained ankle, unvaccinated, uh, staff administers a sham uh, PCR test, the test produces an ina inaccurate and false positive result. Because you are, un un uh, are un un unvaccinated, staff runs PCR testing, free but mandatory, at an amplitude of 45 cycle thresholds, uh, which make uh, positive results 100% uh, invalid. Uh, moreover, we know that the weekly unspecific PCR test was unreliable for diagnosis of anything, producing inordinate amounts of false positives when used at the amplitude of 45 cycle thresholds. So the pandemic is more a PCR testing pandemic uh, than an actual crisis. The test is a scam. All corona measures, measurements are illegal. Uh, big hospital payoffs begin while administering standard protocol. Fentanyl inducing sedation induced co uh, coma plus the, the kidney killing uh, remdesivir, Fauci's favorite which shuts down your kidneys, then you end up dying on a ventilator weeks later of pneumonia, edema, induced by poisonous remdesivir. Uh, you drown in your own IV fluids under sedation, uh, under a sedation-induced coma. After you die, the hospital is awarded their 100000 Medicare payoff incentive payment. This happens every day in hospitals all across the country. Uh, to ramp up public fear so that panicked people will line up to take the experimental bioweapon jab, people not realizing that the jab has numerous negative side effects and that we are experiencing a spike uh, in reactivated cancer cases that have been in remission and that possibly the toxic spike protein weakens our natural immune system possibly inducing reduced fertility, and people are becoming fearful of being admitted to hospitals. Now the truth is beginning to emerge, and as suspected, the actual death toll is vastly lower than we were led to. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Always uh, very informative. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, there are no firmer, uh, further speakers. 
Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> City Manager, would you please respond to public comment concerns? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, members of the public. I'll briefly respond to some of the comments that were made. Mr. Herman and Mr. Shoemaker, I think we're just expressing opinions. I'm not sure there was follow-up administratively. Um, as always, I'm appreciative that um, Wen Wen Zeng comes from the library to share her information on the on the broadcast as well as uh, with the city through its um, um, social media platforms, et cetera. And so that's always much appreciated. Uh, Ray Vargas um, spoke about the follow-ups from his last time here. We do see these public comments as an opportunity for people to seek redress of their grievances and concerns that they have. And um, I know we got back to him in a variety of those categories, the, the traffic engineer and a lot of offices that most people aren't aware truly do respond to citizen inquiries. And so we'll continue to do that. If Mr. Vargas says any more for us, please um, bring them forward uh, during the week or, or here. Either is fine. Um, Lisa Mayo um, invited council and the community to a community event about domestic violence. We talked briefly about crime stats earlier under the police report. That is one crime stat that's definitely gone in the wrong direction. So it's an issue that needs our attention and our care. And, and, and as a society, I think we need to do much better with. So thank you for sharing that event. And then lastly, uh, Mr. Robinson shared some opinions. I don't believe I'll need to respond to those either. So thank you very much. Thank you for those comments. Uh, now, do you have a city manager's report for us today? Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I have just some brief comments. Um, next slide. First, I just wanted to make mention, last time I mentioned that we had stood up the steel structures to support the um, solar panels that are being erected at the um, Senior Center. The, the picture on the right shows that those are now in place. Next up on our list, we're going to be covering the roof deck of the parking structure next to City Hall with um, solar panels as well. The thinking behind this is they'll create electricity, which will enable us to save money on our power bill, not only pay for these improvements, but in the end, give us a net gain. Next slide. Um, we wanted to mention about our COVID testing. Um, demand for this has waned, but we are continuing to offer at the Senior Center Tuesday through Saturday, um, typically by appointment at Shadow Oak, Monday through Friday on a drive up window basis, no appointment required at City Hall Monday through Sunday, um, 7 to 7. Um, we will continue to run these as long as there's need for it, but it seems to be falling off. And so when we get to that point, we'll, we'll conclude those uh, one at a time. We'll contract and, and, and move one down and keep, keep another one open. Um, we wanted to reemphasize the West Covina Spring Festival. We think it'll be a very special two-day event with food and drinks and a beer garden and live performances. A lot of community groups are indicating a high level of interest. So mark your calendar, and if you have a community group that would like to participate, please see our Assistant City Manager, Roxanne Lerma. I wanted to invite um, not only the council, but the entire community to a groundbreaking for a new playground that's going in at Friendship Park. Um, we're going to kick that off 11 o'clock this Thursday, February the 3rd. This project is being paid for through the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development under the Community Development Block Grant Program. This was one of our targeted areas that we're able to qualify this project for a major renovation, and we think it's going to be very special. We'd like the public to come see it um, now as we're underway with construction, and then we'll invite again once we're ready to turn the kids loose on the new playgrounds. Um, there's a homeless count coming up. LASA is responsible for this. They're in charge. Those that want to volunteer can volunteer at theycountwillyou.org. The Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority has additional information. The West Covina contingent will meet at the um, Senior Center on, on this day at 8 p.m. We're going to have a couple um, transit services town hall meetings. One will be a virtual on the 9th of February and one um, in these chambers at 7 p.m. We want to invite our residents, community members, to participate in one of these two town halls to go over transit service options. Wanted to um, just highlight a, a maintenance activity that's been kind of on the to-do list for a while now, but compliment our public services crew for getting out there. This is Garvey Avenue South at Barranca, but it's quite a contrast between the way it looked with the weeds and the pe peeling and faded paint and how they've got it looking now. So um, I'm appreciative for their, their good work in the field. 
This next slide shows a new um, Type 3 fire engine that we've now placed into service. This will be useful for um, mutual aid responses, wildland fire scenarios. Also, locally, we'll be able to use this um, engine as to get up in Galster Park in some areas that were previously inaccessible to us. We got this through the um, beneficial influence of one of our uh, brother departments nearby who didn't need this anymore. We were only too happy to buy it at a very, very good price. Wanted to make mention of the draft housing element. We've been putting a lot of work in this, was assisted by a very expert consultant. The, we've gotten comments back from state HCD. Those are available for public review if anyone wants to see what the state has to say about our effort. We're going to place this on a planning commission agenda to give people an opportunity to weigh in there. Um, the state continues to push local governments to um, move in the direction of compliance with all the state housing laws. And lastly, we wanted to say Happy Lunar New Year. We wish everyone happiness, success, and good fortune. That's all I've got this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, City Manager. Appreciate that. Uh, we have a comment, question? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just had a, a clarifying uh, question. So the the LASA um, for February 22nd, the count uh, is, is no longer at Cameron Park. It's moved to the Senior Center. Oh, excuse me. I misspoke. Yes. I'm sorry. Cameron Park. You are correct. Okay. They were hoping for 60 volunteers. And I think so far had maybe a third of that number. And yeah. so they're really hoping to get the head count up. It's a single point in time count. It happens annually. They pushed it back this year because of the ever present COVID concerns. But um, anybody that wants to be hands on and help with that count um, is encouraged to do so. And we've got information on our website about how to sign up. So thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the consent calendar. Council, is there anything you would like to pull from the consent calendar? Anybody? Oh, sorry, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, six. Okay, you would like to pull number six. Would anybody else like to pull anything? No? Councilman Lo Woman Lopez. Go, go ahead. Mayor, once you're done there, I, I just wanted to clarify that the resolution we're asking you to approve for the existence of a local emergency due to the recent high wind storm. We've updated the um, resolution that's in your packet to clarify that we're requesting funds as a result of our disaster declaration. We weren't clear enough about that. So there's an amended resolution uh, on the website, and that'll be what you're acting on when you approve that item tonight. Thank you for that clarification. I think it's important for our residents to be aware. We had some significant damage that occurred as a result of the windstorm a couple weekends ago. So thank you for seeking that assistance. Uh, back to a uh, consent calendar. Uh, Councilwoman Lopez Viado, were you about to say you want to pull something? So you, she already pulled. She pull, six. She's pulling. Uh, yes, Mayor okay. Pro Tem Diaz is pulling six. Um, I'll go ahead and pull five, seven, and eight. Okay, we're pulling five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Cool. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll. Do I have a motion to approve one through four? I'll motion. And I'll second it. So we, there we go. We got a first and a second for one through four. Councilmember Tabatabai? Aye. Councilman Wu? Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Villado? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Diaz? Aye. Mayor Castellanos? Aye. Items one through four on consent pass, and that brings us to uh, item number five <clears throat> regarding the EKG heart monitors for, for our fire department and. We got our chief here at the mic. Go ahead, please. And well, I'll let Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Any specific questions? Yes, Go actually, um, under your discussion, it says West Covina Fire Department operates three advanced life support ALS ambulance. Each ambulance has a cardiac monitor as required for patient care. And then it also states the fire department currently utilizes six. Is it Zol? Zol? Zol. Zol. Okay, Zol series e heart monitors in the field and. None in reserve. So my question is, um, are all six being used, or, or is it only being used for those three um, ambulance? Or I just, I just wanted to know, because it says none is in reserve, but I wanted to know um, if all six is currently being used. And if so, where are they located? Where would the other three be located? So, yes, you're correct. We keep, we keep an EKG monitor, uh, electrocardiogram monitor on every piece of apparatus because all of our apparatus are have an ALS component. 
Some are assessment rigs, and others are full paramedic uh, qualified through Purdue County. And we carry on every apparatus every day we're on. So they're all being used. Oh, wait, all six being used for, wait, all five? Because it says operates three um, ambulance. So I'm assuming. So the one, fire two, engines goes. and the fire truck all carry them as well. Because when they get on scene, they're a paramedic assessment unit. And they can quickly start cardiac care if they need to. Pacing, defibrillate, or whatever with their heart monitor. Okay, so each vehicle has it. Yes, yeah, correct. Oh, okay. Um, no, uh, I actually don't have any questions with the Zoll. Um, I just saw it uh, at the eminent health hospital. Uh, when I took my kids to their pediatric visit, I just saw their big um, Zoll machine, and I'm like, oh, it's the same one that the city used, so it's actually a, a pretty good, they, they did mention it's a good company. Well, it's a little smaller than theirs, so we can compact, but same oh, thing, okay. I think. So it's the same. Oh, okay. Um, and then if, I know it says not in reserve, but you are replacing, you're only requesting to replace five and what about the other one? Um, why not all six? So uh, for background, the three of them, three of them that are on the actual paramedic rescue ambulances, they are currently X-series. They're older X-series, and the other six are E-series, which are outdated. They can't even be upgraded. They can't even do the software, and they don't do what we need to do at this time, and they can't be fixed. So we're limping away with those right now. So we're going to replace those. We're going to replace um, six of those with five because we have we only filled five. We used to have, when we had the other fire engine on duty every day, that one was the sixth one that was on duty. So we're actually only utilizing five. Okay, so but you'll, would you still the sixth have? This one was kind of parts. We were using it as, to be honest with you, we were using it as parts for the other five E-series. Okay, well, my concern is if there is none in reserve and one goes down, what happens? Well, with the contract we do with them this year, it gives us five years of free maintenance and warranty and full replacement. I'm, I'm full use as a loaner when one does get worked on, five years. Is it instant, though? So if one breaks down right now, they will get one instant? Out, the tech will come out and switch with us, fix the one we need, and give us one as a loaner. 24 hours, no matter what day, time? Yes. I, I can't say it'll be there in 10 minutes, but okay. it'll be there shortly. Okay. I, I did see the plan and everything. I know it's only for five years. Um, what's the lifespan of these products? Well, we've used these for 13 years, so we're hoping to get another one in the next couple of years as a reserve to help us out. But they didn't replace within 10 years the lifespan, and most electronics are like that. And, and after five years, when the warranty expires, is we'll, um, the we'll, we'll work on that part. We had to get these in service because we were limping through. So we'll, we'll work on that as we get, get along, like maybe another warranty or some more spares. Okay, that's all I had. We're, we're hoping they last us a lot longer than five years, which traditionally they do. Eight to ten is average lifespan okay. of those machines. Sounds good. Thank you, Councilman Wu. So, so okay. And the, all those purchases not touch the general fund, right? This is uh, from grant or this is from general fund. That's correct. This was uh, items that were part of the uh, CIP project that was approved by this council, I believe. Got it. So, so on all capital improvement from the rescue, okay, fund from the federal. That's correct. Okay, so this is the purchase from that. So, no, I have no problem. I, I think this is uh, vital for, okay, the, the equipment to save life, and especially right now, okay, and uh, heart attack, all this situation is happening all the places. So so I think this is a, a good purchase, okay, and, uh, and I think that machine will last pretty long time, okay. And uh, since you're here, I, and we just have saw the, your display, so that beautiful, okay, uh, Old engine, but still very functional engine. Okay, and uh, I, I think it's a good purchase. Okay, because West Covina has a lot of hillside. Okay, and we have a BKK. Okay, and a possible once a blue moon. Okay, we might. And the Gloucester Park, that's pretty. So maybe you can tell us, okay, and I think we can use the mutual aid, like city manager talked about. So maybe you can quickly give us some brief, okay, and uh, what you intend. And my question, I don't, okay, I think since we, you're here, how about staffing? Okay, since we got this engine, okay, and uh, how we move the staff around. So, thank you. So, uh, this is what's called a Type 3 fire engine. Our normal day-to-day -day fire engines you see running around the fire, around, around the city, they're called Type 1s. They're a little bit bigger. They're uh, a larger uh, wheelbase. They carry a little bit more water, and therefore, more fires like house fires, commercial fires. 
A Type 3, which is this one that we purchased, is a smaller wheelbase and it's 4x4. It's uh, an, an apparatus that we can utilize in our wildland urban interface area, Galster Park, BKK, around the other south here, those areas where we were unable to access by fire apparatus ever. Now we have this apparatus to, to get up there at a very um, economical price, and it's a very good um, apparatus. It's going to be what's called a cross-staffed apparatus. Apparatus. It'll be stationed at Station 4. Station 4, which would be the fire station, that has that high target hazard area with the brush. And if a call comes down that mimics whatever we put into the computer-aided dispatch that, hey, it calls for the Type 3, then the units that are at the unit that's at Station 4 will jump on that one. It'll be ready to go, and they'll respond quickly on that apparatus. So it's a cross-staff. We're not going to daily staff it. It's going to be staffed with the crew that's already at Station 4 on Engine 4, three persons. Second part of your question is, yes, a Type 3 fire engine is um, a very sought-after af apparatus when it comes to mutual aid for the ur urban interface and other wildland fires throughout the United States, throughout California, and we haven't had one. So this one would be called out more than our Type 1 fire engines, which you guys know the Type 1s were called out a lot last year. The revenue that we bring back, the reimbursement we get from the state and from the federal government, we're anticipating paying this off very quickly, very easily, and then make some more and get us more training on uh, how to fight fires off a 4x4 four four fire engine. It's going to be very beneficial. So the Type 3 is smaller. I saw it. It's a smaller engine. It's a pump, right? So do they carry water inside? That's correct. It's the exactly same thing. It's just smaller, quicker, can get up and around. We, we drove it up to Galster Park. It went up there like... So basically, it's still carry the water so you can ride away. And it yeah. pumps water while it's moving, which our Type 1s traditionally don't do. We have a couple that do, but they don't usually do that. So yeah, I, I think it's a good purchase. I think the city needs a size like our city. Okay, I think, okay, and the I, city manager told me the price. I said, whoa, this is a good price. Okay, to purchase, I, I think with a mutual aid, we can easily, okay, get this investment 10 times back. But in the meantime, more important is they can protect our hillside. And uh, you never know, last time, Gloucester Park, okay, almost become catastrophe due to all sorts of woods, okay, a lot of overgrown tree, and uh, that this maybe can be there right away and attack the fire. So, so we can save property and life. Thank you so much. Okay, appreciate. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Lopez Viado. So uh, back to this one, um, I see that it has like life-saving procedures. Um, that this actually machine can send a copy of the ECG report via Wi-Fi to the hospital. I, I think that's great. The other older models, can they do the same thing? The older X models we have on the rescue ambulance can. The E series are outdated, and the firmware can't be updated to communicate like that. They they have a different component, can do it slightly but not as accurate and correctly and other information like the medications we're giving and stuff like that directly to the hospital so that communication is is immediate. Okay. So but this still continues despite the warranty expiring and everything, right? Yes. We can still Okay, that's wonderful. Uh like I said, great machine. Thank you. All right. Uh any any further questions of our chief? Okay. What do I have a motion? Uh move the motion to approve. Second. You got a first and a second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Tabatabai. Aye. Aye. Councilman Wu. Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Diaz. Aye. Mayor Castellanos. Aye. Uh, our consent calendar item number five from our fire department passes 5 0, brings us to number six, our PD item regarding uh, body worn cameras. And this one was pulled by Mayor Pro Tem Diaz, correct? Okay, I'll let you take the floor and get started. Any, any specific questions, or would you just like a report? Oh. I would like a report, and then, um, then we'll go from there. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, good evening, council staff, residents. Again, Chief Richard Bell. Um, I'm here to discuss your consideration for the approval of a body-worn camera grant. It's from the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and... Um, I just wanted to let you know that the body-worn cameras is industry standard at this time. Um, every agency has it. Um, some have had it a little longer than us, but we've been looking at it for a while, and the timing is right for us to proceed with it. Uh, we were one of several cities in the state of California to receive this grant. It was a very competitive bid. It was an application, and, um, and we were chosen, so I'm extremely happy about that. The grant itself contributes $100,000 towards body-worn cameras, and you have to get 100. 
We have 100 officers. It's perfect for us. Uh, but it's also a one-to-one -one match, which means we have to match the $100,000 that, uh, that they gave us. And we, um, we have the money uh, from a state supplemental law enforcement grant uh, that we've had. Uh, we were able to save some of that money and, and contribute to this match. Um, additional funds uh, to complete this project uh, may increase depending on the RFP, um, which we are currently uh, working on at the moment. Uh, the cameras will help increase transparency, uh, build trust within the community. Uh, there are some studies that have shown that the body-worn cameras have reduced officers' complaints, uh, increased compliance, and in some cases, um, increased performance. A committee, like I said, has already been formed. Um, we are looking at the different uh, agencies out there that provide body-worn cameras. And just so you know, it's a very detailed uh, uh, complex <laughs> um, process, uh, but I want you to know that um, we have a, a timeline uh, that we've already put together, and we are um, moving pretty fast with that. Our goal is to have an RFP, um, if approved tonight, uh, to you within the next month, month and a half, which is uh, pretty fast. Um, so tonight, with City Council approval, um, we can complete the grant process. Uh, what we bring in for you today is just so you can approve the grant process. That way we receive the 100000 and we'll go ahead and match it. Um, and I also want you to know that um, as we move through this process, this won't be the last time that you will hear about body-worn cameras. We plan on bringing back additional reports to show you what the camera will do, how it will affect our offices, officers, how we use it, and you can ask additional questions at, at that time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chief. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Um, I think it's an excellent idea, and um, I was really happy to see this on our agenda. And um, I think it's way overdue. I think this is going to help our city and help our officers, and like you said, um, with transparency, and it'll uh, maybe help with compliance. And um, I think it's an excellent idea, and I'm really happy about it. So um, I would look. I had something. Thank you. No, I, I just wanted to mention, I, I had a conversation with one of our police officer, LAPD, and um, he was really against the body camera at first, um, but he said he had an incident with a woman that was arguing with him. She actually threw herself on the floor, threw herself on the wall, and was yelling, you know, you LAPD, all this stuff, like, you're harassing me, you pushed me, and she filed a report, and she and he said... That camera <laughs> saved his life. So he's like, this is now my best friend. So the uh, body-worn camera does help um, on both sides and also to protect our officers as well uh, on both ends. I mean, it, it, you can just see it. So I, I think it's a great thing, and um, I'm happy to see this as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing um, the price for this and, and the, the rest of uh, um, the RFP, we, um, I guess the outcome of the RFPs, yes. that's what I'm looking forward to. So we can get moving with this. I think that'll be great. Absolutely. It's one of our goals. It's also a city goal. Um, I don't know if you guys remember about a year and a half ago. So we do have cameras in our cars. Um, the body-worn cameras are better because it goes with the officer wherever the officer goes. But in this one particular instance, um, it was able to capture a traffic stop and the the young lady that uh, made the complaint, uh, she threw it on social media right away. Um, but her allegations was that her boyfriend got beat up and we pulled up her dress and all these things that just looked terrible on social media. And luckily, we were able to capture the incident on, on our cameras, on our car cameras. So we made the decision to post it right away to social media. And immediately, she took it down and it stopped. Um, so those things do happen. Um, but not only do they protect the officers, I think it helps protect citizens and the community as well. So really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any further questions or comments? Councilman Wu. I just have a quick one. I just want to know if we are approved tonight, how soon that this equipment can be on the officers, okay, and body so they can be affected. Okay, so I know we are approved and you have to get matching grant, but this do you have uh, estimation time? Um, so all the officers can carry one? 
Well, um, we're, we're going to get a hundred. Um, yeah, obviously, if we approve it and we're able to get all the funding for it, but um, this will probably be somewhere around a summertime implementation. I mean, you have to you have to do the RFP. You have to approve it that way, and then there's training that goes along with it. Um, you know, uh, I can say a month, but it puts a lot of pressure on trying to get it done in a month. And what we want to do is make sure that the system we get. It's something that West Covina can use, and it's going to be beneficial to us. We don't want to rush it and then have to come back and say, oh, we need this. We want to make sure we do a good job. But I want you to know that it is my number one goal this year, and we're going to be pushing hard to make it make it done. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep you. So going. roughly three, three, four months. Uh, yeah, that's okay, the that's time fair, right that's now. That's fair, yeah, because you need to send an IP and get a grant, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you all for your questions and comments of this item. I think uh, we've explored this a while. Uh, my recollection, I think the cost was in between seven and 800000 Hopefully it hasn't climbed too much since then. Um, and I think the one of the critical parts of this item is the cloud solution. So hopefully we, we get a, a, a good vendor there because that'll be key to responding to uh, public records request. So keep up the good work. We appreciate it. And do I have a motion to approve? I'll got second. A first and a second. Roll call, please. <laughs> Councilmember Tabatabai. Aye. Councilman Wu. Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Diaz. Aye. Mayor Castellanos. Aye. P item passes 5 0. Thank you, Chief, for that report, and thank you to our uh, captains for all the hard work they've put into this as well. And uh, that brings us to item number seven, pulled by Councilwoman Lopez Viado. And do you have any specific questions, or would you just like a report? Um, Good evening. If it's a quick report. Okay. But Mayor, I do you have a question? Would you like a report first? Sure. Okay. Mayor, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Uh, go, uh, go ahead and proceed with the report on item number seven. Yes, this is uh, this uh, project is part of the uh, general uh, improvements that uh, we have over the uh, city on the parks and uh, improvement of you know the playground, restrooms, and so on and so forth under your uh, you know direction and your leadership. These three parks they had uh, three. Um, Playground, it was uh, sandy and old and not uh, playable. And it was, uh, we help of staff who talked to the county of LA, and we are getting a grant from uh, part of the Prop A to convert the money and set up just. Uh, Using it in the park, just use it for the playground. They they approved it, and we uh, we got going. We got a, uh, we got the um, uh, request for bids out, and then uh, on in uh, December of last year, we got the bids, and we have uh, four bids uh, from four contractors. We went through all the. Uh, the background check and the references and so on and so forth, and we uh, selected the uh, lowest responsible, responsive bidder to do this job. Okay. Um, I think this is great. Uh, it's better than sand and wood chips, and I know three years ago, uh, my church and I uh, filled up the wood chips at Walmarado, and I just easily disappear again. So it, it's it's an ongoing rotational thing. It's just, it's yeah, like I mentioned, that this is much better. But I wanted to know, what's the life cycle of this, and who will do the repairs? And what well, type the, of warranty will they be given? Well, the life cycle of these things are usually 10 to 15 years, because, you know, constantly you're, uh, you're on them and everything. As far as the maintenance goes, we you know, do the maintenance, and we do not hire anybody to come in unless it gets very much, you know, torn up bad or something. Then we get bring uh, uh, experts to kind of take a look. And usually when it's pretty bad, you just have to completely replace it because these are robberized uh, 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 playground in the poor in place, and when it gets torn up, you know, you don't kind of, uh, repair it per se, is, uh, and then you have to replace it. And uh, the wear and tear portion, like 
the heavy usage, like, such as the swings where they, there's a lot of um, wear and tear, those you will replace, right? Oh, yes. They'll we, become holes. Absolutely. We constantly maintain it and everything. But sometimes, you know, the, it just goes beyond the maintenance and you, don't, you just you can't just repair it or anything. You have to completely replace it. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Um, no, that was my, that was my question. Any other questions or comments? Councilman Tabatwa. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I believe uh, Councilwoman uh, Lopez Viado also asked about uh, the warranty. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, and we, so we didn't hear that. We do. Um, I'm, uh, I don't have that information. I will get it. I did not uh, see it in the uh, contract, but I will get that information and we'll bring it to the council. Yeah, thank you. And actually, that should apply to all our contracts <laughs> because, well, just generally speaking, a, I'm not, not just have this. That. Yeah, no. but I'm just saying generally because what we've seen is that they do the work, they're done, they leave a year or two later, roof leak or whatever it is, and then they're just gone. They won't uh, fulfill. But I want to make sure that that is in the contract. Absolutely correct. And uh, we usually we do have the one to two years warranty regardless. But on most of these things, we ask for an extended warranty. I don't have that information. I just want to make sure they have that fine line because I know warranties can be funny. And they'll say, well, that's not us. It's considered wear and tear when it's not. It's Absolutely. their def defective I will, product. I will definitely look into it and uh, bring it back to the council. And if this gets approved, um, how long does it take? Well, when would it days. begin? The contract duration is 30 days from the date that we send the notice to proceed. They have 30 days to complete it. To complete it? Yes. Okay. That is in the contract. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, go ahead, Councilman. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Okay, only these three park. We have a sixteen park. Okay, so, so do you have a survey of the parks? Okay, and including, okay, I think the okay they are not here on the north side. Mm. Okay, what happened to that one today? Have you surveyed that one? Did the park need to be, okay, um, replaced, improve, or okay, or do something? Um, we have not. I don't recall that we surveyed any park, but we have we have gone through some of the parks that we knew, the like the playground or restrooms and et cetera are not in a good shape and it needs to be uh, replaced or something. So, do you have a any okay document or record regarding the Onote Park? Okay, well, regarding their status right now in their. A playground? I do not have a status of all the parks a playground. I only mm -hmm. have these uh, that we... So uh, only these three, okay. These are three. Currently. And friendship, you just saw that we have a... Correct. Ground that break is a and, to and, redo uh, everything, yes. And the uh, Cortez Park, another Correct. one that we're going to do. We are doing one by one, but I do not know, uh, recall that we did survey on all the 15 or 16 parks that we have. We have a... Okay, and uh, maybe the schedule to, okay, and uh, to starting survey each of the parks, see which park need to be addressed. I think quite a few parks mm -hmm. need to be looking to it, okay, and then so um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, okay, right now we just approved these three playground, okay, with a, a rubber safety, okay, replacement. But how about all the park? Okay, and uh, the we will uh, we will definitely survey, start surveying, and uh, bring the result back. We how soon we can bring back to council to see and uh, how we survey entire our parks? Okay, which park in each area, what they need to be addressed, and we can maybe find grant. Okay, and uh, I think we have uh, quite a few parts. Really, I think a month should be sufficient. What do you think, Mayor? We can do the survey in two weeks at the two most. Two weeks to see we okay, what need to be yeah, improved, okay, and more need than to enough. Be fixed. We will survey and bring it. Sprinkler system, the playgrounds, okay, amenity or grass, okay, and uh, all that kind of thing. And then I think since we have more manpower right now, I think it's about time, okay, to put our manpower in use. And to survey all our park, all park is our assets. Okay, and I think 
we need to find a way. Okay, so um, I think, okay, a couple of parks. You want to mention some of the parks in your area? I've, I've got for, we could cover. Go, go ahead, Mir. You... For your information, you know, we have started uh, with the uh, restrooms like uh, Cameron Park restroom uh, design is complete. Um, City Hall restrooms design is complete right here. Design or construction? Design. Only design. You have to design it first, you know, to know exactly what. And then we are moving to uh, Malrado Park. Uh, you know, that's design is starting. And we're going to do uh, the design that we did for the Cameron Park, and we're going to do them on all other parks. And part of our survey, we will definitely let you know which park needs you know, uh, you know so, uh, the restroom or uh, playground or grass or whatever, uh, one afternoon. Is that possible you can, since you're going to improve a lot of bathroom and that bathroom is a lot of residents complaining about, so maybe you can post on the city website regarding what okay, our public work department want to do, okay, okay, and uh, regarding okay, all those bathrooms and uh, which one we go first and are we going to do it all at the same time? And uh, then give people a timeline, and they, the resident will see their neighborhood park, their bathroom will be improved. Okay, and uh, so for that, okay, people can expect thing will happen. Absolutely. Sense? We will definitely. Because right survey now, I heard them. about that, but I don't even know the schedule. Yeah. We, let's, uh, we will survey, uh, survey all the parks as you directed, and then uh, the next step will be. What we want to do and how long it's going to take to do. Yeah, exactly. The, again, is okay. What we need to do and uh, how soon we can do it, and uh, when we will complete, and then and uh, where we get a grant. So I think residents want to see is okay when we can get a safe park, a clean park. True. Yes. Absolutely. That's Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Uh, quick question. I know we have playgrounds at Palm View, Aroma, and Walmarado. So thank you, but. Um, in regards to the Prop A, does this, um, is it only affected or can it be open to all parks? Because I know, I remember when I was a community and senior service commissioner, only certain parks were uh, qualified due to the dem demographics or, you know, the income level. So I just wanted to know if this still is the same base basis. Are you talking about... I see nod heads there. But. Are you talking about... Uh the grant that we are getting from the L.A. County? Is, is that what you're saying? Yes. The grant is for park improvements. But any park, no matter what demographic or what area in the city? Unfortunately, I can't answer you that. I think the city manager but might. That, uh, something that... Um, May. Sure. I will definitely... City manager. Go ahead. Well, through the chair, if I may. So just to answer your question, um, Councilwoman lopez Viado, you know, there are grants that are out there, some of your more competitive ones that do take a look at the demographics in the surrounding area. And they typically look at a one-mile radius from your project area to determine whether or not there is a need. So um, one Friendship Park is an example of that. You know, that is a high-need area um, that would be that particular project qualified for that type of grant. Um, the the grants through Prop A through LA County, um, those are specific. While those funds are available to the city, we do have to still apply to use those funds and identify eligible projects. So to answer your question, yes, um, what makes a city competitive is number one, demonstrating a need. Number two, the ability to complete a project. And number three, if you have a project that's shovel ready and how you're going to leverage the funding versus um, any sort of match. So we can get creative with that. We can get aggressive with that, uh, with a more, an, a more of an aggressive approach to grants. And um, I hope that answers your question. Very clear. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you. And um, do I have any further comments, questions? Councilman Tabatabai. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just uh, to, to, to speak on Del, Del Norte Park, my, my son, who's a regular user of it, would say, yes, it is ready for a, a rubberized track. My wife would agree as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, since we're talking parks, uh, the, the small playground at, at Orangewood um, also uh, definitely could use yes. some love. And I believe... Most of the parks. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for that. Yeah, and I'll echo that. I mean, 
it's ever since we put in the squishy ground uh, at Shadow Oak, I, I really like it. Seems pretty durable. Oh, and to answer your question about warranty, it is specified in Section 6.1 of the contract. We do require, and you should know this too, Amir, uh, a one-year um, one year warranty secured by a bond. So that by is, bond? yeah, Section 6.1, middle of the paragraph. We, we do have a one-year warranty. Um, that stuff seems pretty durable, I think. If Usually, um, it is one year kind of giving. Two years, you know, we will. But when we have these kind of stuff, we will talk to the contractors to make sure that we get more warranty for it because this is kind of this rubberized stuff, you know. It's just constantly you moving on it. That, that would be great. That way, in future contracts, we could actually modify the language to specify Absolutely. two years or whatever they agree to. Yes. I think it's pretty durable. I think they, if they're confident in their product, which I think they are, I don't think they'll have sure. any issue with that. Uh, and speaking of the parks, yes, I mean, any that we haven't done uh, bathroom upgrades or the squishy ground that I like, um, let, let's look at that. Gingrich Park needs some love. Uh, Galster does too. So does Woodgrove. Uh, those are on my district, but we, I look forward to the report you mentioned. Absolutely. I will definitely Citywide. on the, you know, the it's survey the and all the parks and I'll be back in two weeks. Please. So give you the report. And as part of that survey, I would like for us to also look at, um, Ridge Riders Park to, and not, not only there, but just holistically look at, are we utilizing our parks in the best fashion for the benefit of our residents and really keep that as a focus. And uh, with that, um, Cal Councilman Wood, do you have any, any other questions? And the follow through, okay, and the, the mayor regarding the other parks, okay, and the, all the places, okay, for example, like you say, the, the Greenwich Park, okay, and the, it, it's not on our radar, I think, but they need our tender loving care. We need to check about how they and uh, doing and uh, should we need to some improvement and same thing too. And uh, which rider, okay, I think maybe a city manager can kind of share with us, okay, what, okay, the city maybe have the survey, okay, this is a big part, but look like abandoned or something. We don't know what we're doing anything. That's the, the land behind the Maverick, Maverick okay, a baseball field. But if you drive inside, you just see just like Dirt. Okay, it's supposed to be equestrian. But I didn't see any show and any people riding horses. I don't even know how many, okay, and the horse population we have in West Covina. Like, it's all become housing, okay, and there's no horse property anymore. So, should we survey, see what we can maybe plant tree or plant something? Because right now it's just like abandoned. So, and it's our public park and our land. So and uh, uh, not uh, not so maybe uh, our assistant uh, city manager can give a report for that. Okay. That, 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 go ahead, Roxanne. Through the chair, if I may, yes, we can definitely do a survey. We can incorporate that in um, what um, um, Mir has indicated that he would provide in the two weeks. We can take a look at that space and what the best utilization for that space is, as well as in incorporating some of the other points that you had said that you wanted us to take a look into um, what equestrian uses are um, currently out there, comparing it over a couple of years, as well as what groups are currently um, in and around the area that, that may or may not have interest. So we can we can definitely do that. Yeah, because, okay, I think once upon a time we have a strong equestrian Okay, and but now I don't see anything going on, and due to the population demographic change, so what we can utilize the land rather than abandon over there, and maybe we can have a town hall meeting with residents to talk about what they want, okay, in their neighborhood park, what they want to do, maybe plant the grass rather than a bunch of dirt, okay, that's one thing. And another thing, okay, Heritage Park, we have a tailor home over there. Why is it useful for that, that property a lot all the time? Should we do some usage? Okay, rent it out for people to do, okay, meeting or something. So, so maybe you can survey, give us a report. What we have so many, okay, assets, okay, and uh, amenity, okay, but any assets is liability too. We need to kind of, kind of upkeep those property at the same time, fix the bathroom, make sure it's clean. 
safe, okay, and a tailor home, okay, that has historical property. So we do education for our children can be, can tour over there or something to open up for the school to see this is an old historical building. So, so we need to, we have all this thing, why not we utilize? And then we have all this, okay, community center in all the different area. Okay, can we rent it out or can we let people to use usage? Okay, rather well, than empty over there. So what can we do? Okay, so can you have a report? Okay, and send back to to council, and uh, we can discuss. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. So I just wanted clarification. Thank you. Um, the report that we're expecting in two weeks uh, is it going to be a full on report, as what Councilman Wu mentioned, or is it just going to be the aesthetic of like the bathroom and the usage? Well, it's going to. Um, well, it I could be for both. Oh. I mean, for, let's give ahead. direction as to what you want, and, well, I, and I, we'll make it that. Okay. Uh, sorry, I saw Roxanne. <laughs> <Can I> answer <laughs> yeah. you know, If I may, um, I was alerted to the fact that the city had conducted a park needs assessment not too long ago. I think revisiting that needs assessment and using that as a base to see um, where we were at that time and then where we are now, I think is a good start. Um, I, I agree with a comprehensive approach. But and as much as I like to be gung ho about things, I do think it's going to take more than two weeks. And understanding what you want, and, and really being able to paint a full picture to give you good data, um, I, I would go back to what the mayor's suggestion is, and uh, of about a month. Yeah, that's well. That's why I was asking because I said two weeks. And pop quiz: Do you know how well, many if I may, we have um, mayor in if our I city? May add to that: Is this working? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two weeks, it will be just a spreadsheet of the name of the parks and what needs to be done. It's, you know, kind of quick, uh, you know, thing. But if you want to elaborate, you know, a study of the grass and so on and so forth, it's going to take a little bit more than that. You know, we kind of study to see exactly what we need to do and what should be done and all of those things. But for two weeks, I will give you the spreadsheet of the parks and uh, what we think is, needs to be done very quick and then uh, bring it to the council and you can look at it and say, okay, just uh, let, let's have an elaborate, you know, report to us what you want what you want to be done would grow park or whatever park that you you know that council chooses i know i had a pop because you know how many parks we have in west covina uh i think it's 15 or uh 16, 16. okay something like that sure. okay good job well um two weeks okay go ahead uh, uh, no, I think two weeks is a fair time. Mm -hmm. I think you can provide at least the 16 park. Okay, yes. what we have, that way, including the sportplex. This is one of our park too. So that's why totally 16 parks. So 16 parks, okay, you basically could list, okay, and then how soon we can do a survey, each park, what they need to be fixed. For example, the, the playground, the rubber, some, some of the, some of the park doesn't even have a playground. Should we reply? Okay, and uh, apply grant to put a okay child playground over there. And do we okay? Is that do they have that need? Okay, so so I think each of the park okay gradually you have the survey. But I think the first priority is repair. Okay, how we repair? So priority. The priority repair. Okay, repair. Okay, fixing. For example, okay, and then we talk about how to utilize those parks. But I think repair. Okay, and to make it safe. Okay, that is priority so we don't have people get hurt or something. Our children doesn't have a robbers, okay, the padding. So I think that maybe is a priority. So anyway, you guys, as a public okay, uh, work department, you guys have to find what priority. And uh, regarding, okay, which rider, how to use, that one will be complicated. But at least you guys have to survey that what, that's our land. So public land. So what should we do on that big, huge land? to become usable, but that one will take some time for resident input and et cetera, et cetera. Make, make sense? Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Any further questions or comments? Yeah, and for Ridge Riders, I'll echo that. Uh, last time I was there, I didn't see any horses. I just saw uh, what seems to be the, the lone resident of that park sleeping under the, uh, the stairs. Um, I woke him up, actually, on an accident. Um, so we, we look forward to that report. Oh, and. Uh, 
When we bring that report back, actually, I'd like to ask our city manager to also bring some pictures of, uh, I'm going to toot my own horn, of a project you and I did at uh, Galster Park when we repaired the, the wooden fence there. So I look forward to that. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, we definitely bring you some pictures. Cool. <laughs> um, do I have a motion? I'll move the motion. We've got one and a second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Uh Thank you. Uh, be before I vote, uh, we went to Galster and nice job. The thank you. <laughs> Aye. Councilman Wu. Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Diaz. Aye. Mayor Castellanos. Aye. Item number seven passes five zero. Brings us to item number eight for our sidewalk inspection and maintenance services. That was pulled also by Councilman Lopez Viado. Same same format as last time, or do you have any specific questions first before we begin with the report? You know, I, I'd like uh, an overview because I'm looking at the initial risk management evaluation and it just didn't seem to go hand in hand. So go ahead and make the report. Um, the, in 2019, um, California Power Insurance Authority of California, they um, complete the initial risk management and um, of the city of West Covina, and they determined there there are we have about 340, um, almost 300, yeah, 240 miles of uh, sidewalks, concrete, and other uh, you know uh, mostly concrete and other stuff, and they decided that they told us that you know this is a. Uh, uh, most of these uh, concrete, um, either on the, the blocks, on the, the, there's uh, either tree uh, uh, roots are intruding, and they uh, kind of come up, and then some of them, there are some water goes underneath, and the other one goes down, and there is a gap between those uh, blocks, and it creates a, a very much hazard to the citizens. And um, the company that uh, is... Uh, kind of doing this kind of work, and they are what they do. They go around and they do do the survey. They take a picture and they come up with a, you know this uh, pretty much report on um, what needs to be done. We mostly, if there are three quarter uh, three quarter inch up, we uh, they do this grinding and kind of leveling up, and it, you don't need to kind of changed, uh, you know, or uh, take the concrete R, uh, out and then pour another concrete block in. If it is more than that, then they have to do the recess to uh, reassess it to see what needs to be done. Uh, and this is a part of, uh, you know, uh, we have a, uh, we are asking for uh, three years uh, you know, contract uh, $240,000 a year and two years option to add to that to uh, bring this company in. They do the survey, they do all the reports, and they tell us exactly what we need to do, and they do it. So for this vendor, I mean, this contract, it's only for inspection? And no, this is uh, inspection. Uh, getting the report and doing the work. So they're going to do the work. Yes. They are actually, this contractor does the work. That's the, their main thing. But the survey needs to be done to see exactly what needs to do to be done. Do you know the breakdown? How long will the survey take? How long will the report take? And then the maintenance, because in three years, are they able to accomplish all that for the entire city? I don't think in three years they can accomplish the whole city. That's a, we're talking about 240 miles, and they do it, you know, by walking. They don't drive it. You know, they walk it, take a picture, and then, uh, you know, go step by step to come up with that report. And that takes time. I my my guess is probably they should be done in uh, three years, but uh, you never know as far as uh, you know the the progress of the work. But you said three years. Three years were two years optional if we need to, you know, to have them. I just want to make sure that the time's not being wasted and, and doing the inspection takes two years. We're paying this annually. And then 
they start the repairs? Well, they're, they're not on their own uh, all the time. We are kind of watching the thing. You know, we kind of not inspecting them every day, but we are watching them, what they're doing, and, uh, you know, the report that they give us, we are kind of reviewing them. Yeah, we are not sitting there and then they just they do a, I don't know, 10 feet of a sidewalk for a week. I mean, we will um, check. Well, that's my, my thing. It's not just check, but I want them to actually have a breakdown of yeah. what exactly and you'd oversee, making sure that they do their job. Because, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the initial risk management evaluation that's attached, but I, no, right here um, it's, it's pictures of everything else, not just sidewalk. And so... I, I, that's why I was a little confused. Is this only covering just the sidewalk, or is it also covering all the um, in, these action items that's inside that has uh, the attachment? Inside of? Of uh, Agenda 8. There's an initial risk management evaluation. So, well, I mean, there's pictures of, like, doors and inside ladders and inside facilities. That's not even well, really sidewalk those are, parks. Those are just example of what what it is there and what is the hazard and what needs to be done. Okay, I, I see our city manager. Oh. Through the chair, if I may attempt to give some context. When we applied to become members of the California Joint Powers Insurance Authority, the first year we applied, they turned us down. Mm -hmm. They turned us down because we had so many risks and so many things that we didn't have programs to address. They thought it was to the point where the other member cities, the other jurisdictions, would be assuming too much on, on West Covina's behalf. So we ordered up this initial risk management evaluation to look at all aspects of city operation and what are the biggest areas. And we've attacked those kind of worst first. So out of the 63 items that are identified in the IRME, the initial risk management assessment, we um, went on the very worst ones. And now we're getting down to some other ones that are equally important specifically in this case, sidewalks. The, the experience of the California Joint Powers Insurance Authority is that a trip and fall costs on average 30000 or more, a little, little north of $30,000. About half of that is attorneys. The, the person that falls gets an attorney, then the city has to get an attorney, or in our case, the JPI has to get an attorney. And then you also have to fix the sidewalk, which if you'd been a proper maintenance program, you wouldn't have allowed the trip and fall to occur in the first place. And it's not just that you know, grandma broke her arm, it's that you've, you've affected someone's life very negatively. And so this is an attempt to get out in front of it, to address the problem, to quantify the problem. And this firm that's in front of you tonight for this contract is a preferred partner that's been brought on by the California JPIA to do this work. I've worked with them before. I can tell you they're really good at it. But it's just sidewalks. And so they're not going to get into street trees. They're not going to get into, you know, curb and gutter. Not going to get into catch basins. It's they're monomaniacs for sidewalks, and so they will give us by area, by zone, an assessment of what needs to be done. Not just the grinding, which they have a patented system to use diamond blades to grind it down, so there's no hike. Um, it's I guess heaven for skateboarders when they're done because it's smooth. And then they also identify which are the permanent panel replacements that are required. So this isn't just it. They'll also be coming back through public works to say, we need money for concrete repairs, we need to use city force accounts, so we're going to need to do, you know, 10 yards a day, et cetera. Um, so this is your first look at it, and then once we turn them loose, they will inspect and grind as they go, and they'll give back to the city, back to council reports about how bad it is. I think you're going to need to spend at least a quarter million dollars a year for the first five, and maybe that amount every year going forward because it's an asset which was put into service and they ignored. And so we've got, on some of the arterial streets, some really bad, really hazardous yeah, I situations. I, I've seen that. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, I think you're going to like this, um, and I've, I can vouch that this firm is, is, is very detailed, and um, once they get going with it, you'll start to see reports that will um, be a little eye-opening, but we, we've quantified the problem, and then you'll be able to prioritize and address it. Okay. I mean, it's good to hear that JPI, um, well, I guess, recommends or worked with this company. So yes. at least that lowers our risk. It, it wasn't just West Covina. I mean, there's 100 municipalities in this entity, in the insurance authority. 
and it was a major loss area for everybody. Everybody was dealing with trip and falls. And so they tried to get out in front of it, how could we address this problem prospectively? And that's how they got to, to this firm. Um, I've worked with Gary Beneducci, and he's, 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 he's really good at it. He runs his crews. He's a, he's a, runs a tight ship. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Wu. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, uh, I think it's overdue. Okay, I think we need this right away. Okay, and uh, the reason is we have people trip. Okay, and we have a lawsuit. Okay, and uh, we have somebody book their knee. Okay, and uh, that's horrible. So we need to address this uneven concrete. Okay, and led to standard. Okay, granted to make it. Okay, even my home. Okay, I I did entire my property because. My wife trip, okay, so, so she sued me, so I have to, okay, <laughs> go in all the places, okay, otherwise I have to step in the garage. So, so that is what is necessity really needed, okay, and, uh, okay, so I have no problem, okay, I think this we need, and this is for our insurance company, so meaning what? They want to avoid any lawsuit, so we, do, we have to make sure all this sidewalk, okay, is safe. So this, remember, Gondora sidewalk, okay, and one of our resident trip and broke knee. Okay, luckily she's just so nice. She didn't sue us. She just want us to make sure fix a place. So, so, but not everybody's so nice. So we want to make sure, but we just don't want the people get hurt. So we want to make sure all this sidewalk is safe. But uh, I have another question. Okay, beside this, I, I'm, I have no problem to uh, my vote will approve this. But my talking about clean up, we, we make it safe, but at the same time, can we have our public worker, okay, to make sure our Street sidewalk is presentable. Okay, no way. And the chew, the shoe, the, the the tree well with all this soccer going out like crazy. Okay, okay, make sure it's presentable. And this is my request. Go with the sidewalk safe and the presentable for our city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Absolutely. Do I have any further questions or comments? I actually do. Councilwoman Lopez-Viato. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. This is for our staff. Actually, since we have the initial risk management evaluation in place, and I, I do see a lot of things that do need repair, um, how is our goal setting that we just accomplished? And I'm, I'm assuming all that is in reference to majority of this. Um, where are we at with that? Oh, through the chair. When, when we asked the council to set goals for the current calendar year, we said some things in there which were very few words but had very major impact. We said we wanted to get all city facilities to standard. Easy to say, hard to do. Because we've got... And we understand that. Everything we own. Um, 14 buildings, that is many leaking roofs. Um, plumbing. Oh, my gosh. We had a situation in this building where the sewer drain pipe from the third floor of City Hall burst and was leaking to everyone below just within the last week, you're really doing emergency repairs. So we want to get out from doing emergency repairs and doing things prospectively. So that you, you set the goal, and now we're returning with a series of things to get city-owned properties and facilities to standard. No, we understand that, but yeah. I, I think it was promised that we'll get like a timeline, an estimated, a breakdown of what's going to go first. I mean, obviously we can't fix the whole city of West Covina in a year. So we'd like to see what what you guys are working on, like what time frame. And I mean, I see this is just, I was curious um, because I believe we promised like a goal within a month or something to that time is now. And so I was just curious on where you're at with that. Okay. Well, we've, we've been prioritizing and we're continuing to place on your agenda the highest priority items. Um, We've done with your goals a, a whole spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and we review that at our at our weekly staff meeting and talk about where are we with every single one of those. It, it's a it's a big effort, but I think we've turned the city's attention from internal and repairing the city finances and the systems internal um, to to moving external and trying to get the town to standard. And um, it's a big job. You're going to see a lot of reports on your agenda this year about all of those things. I just figured we'd had a. Annual review. We'll is there anything you'd like to see specifically, like the top five, or, or you just want everything? No, I just wanted order. to see what you guys were working on for like this coming year. I mean, I'd like to see 
um, goals that we can accomplish, at least certain things that by the end of the year, these are the things. Because putting in reports per month, it gets lost through the whole thing. We forget that that's part of the goal or that wasn't. And so if there was, you know, just like we had the whole goals on one sheet, it's a breakdown of like certain goals or pick a few that the city's doing that we all know that these are the goals. And then at the end of the year, we've accomplished this or what is doable and accomplished that can be accomplished. I'd like to see. I, I right. see your point. I believe every single item on your agenda tonight ties back to a council goal that you approved in January. And so we're going to, we're going to keep that approach and um, I'll, I'll take to heart your comment that you want to see more reporting back in terms of how we're, we're gaining against those goals. Yeah. I understand. At least it's just an annual yeah. beginning. Okay. Thank you. And that was it. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Um, yeah, and I'd like to add, um, Mayor Pro Tem Diaz and I sit on a monthly litigation log meeting, and we've certainly seen that these trip and falls cost us significantly uh, in terms of legal hours and, uh, well, the claim itself. I think uh, this contract will pay for itself in reducing that. We have even, you know, as can be expected, claims for fictitious holes that don't exist. So um, we certainly want to address uh, the trip and fall hazards that do exist. Uh, that being said, do I have a motion to approve? I'll move. And I'll second it. We've got a first and a second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Tabatabai? Thank you. Aye. Councilman Wu? Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viano? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Diaz? Aye. Mayor Castellanos? Aye. And that item passes unanimously. And that takes us to the end of our agenda. And now, do I have any council member reports, requests, or comments? Councilman Wu. I just uh, want to note the follow up, the status of Shadow Oak, the new bathroom. Okay, and uh, that new bathroom, we're so happy to be there. Okay, and the resident is so happy after 30 years' request. And now it's not working. Okay, and we want to know. What happened and uh, how soon that can be repaired so people can use. We put a new bathroom, we spend all the money and time, and uh, we want to know when that bathroom, that they say the, the level, okay, the levy is not working. Why it's not working? It's only a couple of years. Okay, and so why is the issue and how soon we can make it running? Otherwise, uh, <laughs> you have a, you basically you have a problem with it not functional. Absolutely. Um, the reason it doesn't work because the, the lateral from the uh, restroom all the way to the main line was not connected. And we found out... It's not connected? It, it was not connected. This was, I don't know how many years ago, when they put that lateral in, it just stopped. They stopped right at the sidewalk. They did not go on the street and connect them to the main line. And when they did this... Uh, bathroom and they you know put the water there saying looking to see if if water is draining yes it's draining it's going over there and staying over there and they didn't put too much water to water to back up and say hey wait a minute this lateral is not working anyway we had to go out and uh, hire a, a contractor we have not uh, had a, a contract yet and it was unbelievably expensive to come in and do this, but we are having a contractor now. The timeline on that, I, I do not know what the timeline is because we are waiting for the contractor to sign the contract and bring it back, and then will give us what the timeline, you know, how long it's going to take. As soon as that is done, as soon as that is done, the work itself should not be more than two weeks. Should not. And, uh, and I did it before, okay, connection with the sewer into the street. To the main line. Yes, okay, and uh, I done it before myself, okay, and uh, it, it's not that difficult. You just have to dig the trench, okay, and then you have to put a pipe. So, and uh, then the two issues, okay, the first issue, how can it happen? 
that we put a new bathroom and we don't even know, we don't have a connection. It's the first issue, so who's responsible for that? Second issue, that would be, okay, repair this. It's not that difficult to repair. You just need to dig and get the pipe. And the, okay, you say there already have a connection to the street. So meaning the most difficult one is you connect to the main sewer. That, that, that is, you have to dig the street up, okay, and connect. I did it before, again. So, so if that one is already done, though you only have in between, don't have, okay, then you need to just put a pipe, so I don't know how can it be so difficult, and it take forever and ever and ever, and to get this thing done. Well, the reason it takes, um, is the reason it's taking a little time, because our maintenance guys cannot go on the street, cut the street, and do the uh, connection. They are not so, licensed so, to do. I'm sorry. So basically, it's no connection at all. So no connection beginning, at all. Okay. So because you have the, if you have no connection to the main sewer, then you, on the street, then you need to cut the street. Okay. You need to get a permit, cut the street. You have to cut, cut the, the street. Cut the pavement. Okay. Go dig into it. Okay. And then, then you have to connect it. Yes. Get, get, that, get a device. Then you can connect into the place. Well, the, the lateral itself is there. It's, this lateral is coming from here to the right to the sidewalk. I just didn't connect it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just didn't connect it. No. And so you have lateral. You have a pipe. We have the lateral. So you we only need pipe. to dig the street open to but connect it. And then from here behind the sidewalk, it was not connected to the main line on the street. I don't know why they stopped there. This was done. I don't even years know ago. when. Long, long time ago. <clears throat> and. The distance from the restroom to the sidewalk is very much. When they did the videotaping, they didn't go all the way down. They videotaped it and, okay. oh, pipe is clean, pipe is yeah, nice. Okay. Got it. And so, then put the water in there. Got it. So, so got it. So basically, we find out the problem is no connection. So right now, we just have put connection to the main sewer. Okay. And again, it's not that difficult. So what happened, we cannot get any contractor to come in. Okay, and to do it right away. So I think this is from the brook. This is already a, 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 four weeks ago, right? We do have. Uh, we do have. We have. We asked two contractors to come in. One of them asked for ninety-four thousand dollars. Okay, I'm questioning you. Who is asking? Is it you or are some other people asking for? Okay, the contract is Raul asking for contractor. Okay, and uh, Razan, who is asking for contractor? Through the chair, if, my, if I may to answer your question, no, it is, it is not um, the Public Services Superintendent Raul Alvarado who is overseeing that contract. So my, my point is, okay, so maybe we can, see we have a Raul, can we have a Raul Superintendent to, to work on it? Because this has become ridiculous. Go ahead. Understood. Yep, okay. so can we... We, we, can have, we can have another set of eyes look at it. Can we can we just take over and then because the delay and continue to drag, and then we have a brand new bathroom and uh, they just okay okay out of order out of service. It's how ridiculous is that? So so I think this is right now. Okay, we have a staff new staff just have uh, Raul to get a contractor in. Okay, and uh, get the thing done ASAP. I think it will be fast and cheaper. Councilman Wu, we already have a contractor, and we already... Mia, it's not working. Okay, I prefer, I think council prefer to have uh, maybe Raul to take a look with a, a, another pair of eye. That, that should be easy to get a response from Raul. Yeah, it's very easy. I, I built that thing before. So I don't know why it will take weeks and weeks and it's still dragging. So, so would you please get action? If I may, through the chair, if I may, just to address your, your questions, Council Member Wu, or Councilman Wu, um, we'll regroup as a team and we will um, get you an answer and um, move forward accordingly. Would you please? Thank you so much. Okay, um, this, is, this need to be uh, urgent, okay, and uh, get this thing done, okay, and, uh, okay, have uh, maybe the new, okay, superintendent to get the contract, to see, can we different connection would be different price, okay, and fast and reliable, okay, and get the thing done, right? Yeah. I think this is what we want because it's otherwise, what the heck we go to? We went to do the grand opening for what? It will it's be not even working. Yeah, it'll be cause for celebration when we could flush. 
it's a what a bureaucracy we're talking about. It's just ridiculous. Okay, let, let's get it fixed. Okay, thank you, thank you, appreciate. Okay, let's get it done. Thank, thank you. And do I have any more reports, requests, or comments from the council? Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Actually, I received the uh, the voice, and I just wanted to say it, it's so great to see that the seniors are almost operating back to normal. All their activities, all their programmings, um, they just it's it seems like it's back active to pre COVID times. So that's good to know, and that that's good to hear that they're pretty much back to normal, at least for the seniors who need it the most. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Councilwoman. Any further comments? Councilwoman Tabatabai. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to, to piggyback on that, uh, I just wanted to make sure to recognize and uh, thank uh, Supervisor uh, Hilda Solis. Uh, she uh, got us uh, some take-home tests that we were able to provide our seniors through the, the meals program and also families through Cameron Park uh, and also uh, N95 masks for our seniors. Uh, and again, I think, you know, getting our seniors back to, to doing all of these things is, um, is wonderful. So I just wanted to make sure to acknowledge that. Thank you. And any further comments? Councilman Wu? Just a question. Do we receive a four N95 free from the federal government that will, you can apply and they will give to you, right? Uh, yeah, I, I remember, okay, President Biden say, Every household can get four N95, and uh, and they can re can re and mail to your home. Uh, the, yeah, the take take home test. No, no, and uh, N95 too. N95. It's on the news. Mm -hmm. they, they, okay, Joe. Okay, Biden. But the only issue is where you get all this stock. But they say they can create 300 million uh, N95 to each of the resident. Okay, four per household. Okay, and but uh, that's okay. Uh, Research that. Yeah, but if okay, I still have um, a lot of masks. I try to give away. So, but like really tough to give away. I, I still have a mask. If somebody, any people want the mask, okay, I still have a mask. You want? Okay, I okay, I give to you. I want to give away all the masks if as much as I can. Okay, and uh, other than that, okay, I I want to say. Uh, today is the first day of the year of uh, Lunar New Year. I want to wish everyone, okay, have a happy Lunar New Year. Okay, with the year of Tiger, wish you all the best, okay, and uh, healthy and uh, prosperous, okay, and happy. And you're looking for happiness, okay, chasing for, okay, the best of your life. And I wish you all the best for everybody, okay. And uh, if you didn't get my red envelope, please come to, okay, talk. anyone show to red envelope? Okay. See, even Mr. Tabai Tabai get one from me. Okay, so so mm -hmm. so anyway, and this is go you the uh, good luck, okay? And uh, I want to wish you everybody and uh, happy Lunar New Year's and uh, the best of this year and uh, beat this pandemic and be normal again and uh, live healthy and live happiness. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Wu, for the good wishes and and the good luck that you're trying to spread. Um, and uh, th thank you all for your comments. Thank you, staff. Thank you to our public safety and all of our staff and also to the audience that has stayed till the end. We appreciate you guys coming and watching. Uh, and now to move on to something uh, a little bit more sad, I'd like to adjourn in memory of Bill Cagle, as was mentioned earlier. He passed away, as well as Congressman Esteban Torres from the 34th Congressional District. So I'd like us to, well, not only honor them and adjourn in their memory, but also anyone else in our city who has passed away recently. So this concludes our meeting, and we are adjourned. <laughs>